no, I've been very lucky. I've, I've traveled all around the world. I'm, I'm actually uh, I'm doing like a 90 day tour in the States next year because apparently I can get dates over there and I can't hear the way I'm probably going to get shot, let's be honest. Because <laughs> well, there's going to be a lot of stuff about these like, off Americans if I manage to get to it. Um, yeah. I've been very lucky and I've traveled around the world. And it actually got me thinking uh, of my own family history because I've been stealing jokes from Seth. And <laughs> I no, got me thinking about my own family history and I was fascinated by it. There's all these different things that I've learned um, about, about sort of different cultures and stuff. And so, I, so I researched it and it turns out that um, on sort of my granddad's side, it's pretty standard, like British, you know, which includes like Dutch, Scottish, whatever. Um, so the British, um, Australian, Canadian, South African, and Dutch, uh, which is just a really convoluted way of saying sorry, isn't it? Whoops! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I know, I know what his family are up to, and I know what mine are up to. Who was worse? I don't know. Uh, right. <laughs> at least, at least we ended it as well, right? Um, so. And then on my on my grandma's side, it's a bit a bit more a bit more interesting. Um, so it turns out uh, there's Maltese, Italian, Irish scouts. I don't normally mention the last thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Maltese sound Irish scouts, um, which I which I found interesting. I thought it was fascinating. Um, and uh, but you know but you know what happens? You know what happens? When you get generations of all these different cultures and ingredients put together in one pack of scrap, it's this. Okay, rare brain damage, is it? Like, I was born in 27 weeks. I'm basically like a genetic jambalaya that's been severely undercooked. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, you, 
I don't think that it here in this country, I don't think it's as simple as like left wing or right wing, I think it's a lot more a complicated than that, I think it's a lot more nuanced. And like it's a kind of face by base score on your opinion, like situation, you know, whatever. In America, it's very much like us or them. It's very, it's, and it's crazy. And like, the, one, the one example I can give you of how mental I think it is, is um, did you know, anyone hear about the, when the Supreme Court overturned the Roe versus Wade? Did we know about this? Yeah. Yeah. It's a couple of years ago, I think. And essentially, Roe versus Wade, for anyone who doesn't know, um, was essentially, they overturned it, which essentially means that a woman doesn't have the right to choose what to do with her own body. They essentially outlawed abortion, right? It's crazy. It's mental. And, okay, and a lot of the rhetoric was, well, abortion is murder. And it really confused me because I'm like, well, what is the point of banning abortions and saving all these unborn children from being murdered by abortion if they're just going to grow up to die in a school shooting? <laughs> 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 so I would prefer a lot from you know, <laughs> the No, it's better, isn't it? I don't get it. Like, but, <laughs> The thing about America is like there's a few Americans that really wind me up, right? And, I, and I'm not and I'm not cheating on America because I love I love going and I'm very excited to go and it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, but the fact is if I do that material, I will get shot. Um, but the thing is, like, there's a couple of Americans that wind me up so much. My my least favourite American is when somebody says on accident. Have we heard this? Like it's popular on some TV shows. Oh, I didn't mean to, it was on accident. Oh. Honestly, I get, I, I'm clearly I'm not, you know, you're not as, as fucking weird as me. But like, honestly, it, it's like nails to a chalkboard, it drives me mad. Like, I'm genuinely willing to overhaul my entire political beliefs just to get them to stop doing that. Right? You know, it's, honestly, it's like, like, keep your guns, right? Tell your women what to do with their own bodies. Shoot as many unarmed black people as you like. <laughs> as long as it's by accident. <laughs> or at the very least, on purpose. <laughs> Still terrible, but it's grammatically correct. <laughs> and then I don't, I don't do many proper jokes as well. I've written a few um, because I knew I was, I was coming to it. <laughs> you're, you're terrified by that prospect. Thank you for the confidence boost. <laughs> just, I'm going to try out some proper jokes. I just had a go. Oh, cool. Um, and thankfully for you, they're all fruit based. <laughs> um, but the thing, the thing is, you might have a moment now, I get a little bit distracted by my surroundings. I can't find it difficult folks in this game. But I, I genuinely made an effort to sit down before Seth picked me up on the game. I genuinely made an effort to sit down and think on the, on the dining room table, right? I made an effort to sit down, dining room table, sit down and write some jokes, right? Now, I got a little bit distracted because my mum has this like knackered old bowl in the middle of the, the dining room. That normally has like a key that no one knows what it opens, um, a nail, and some slippers for some reason. Like, was, uh, however, today it was filled up with oranges. I assume we were having guests. Right? And just, it just really spun me out. So now, as a result of that, I've got four separate jokes about different types of oranges. <laughs> Here we go, you know this is happening. Um, <laughs> I once had a job peeling clementines, it was a piece of pear. Um, <laughs> 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 once 
I spent the entire day eating nothing but oranges. And that night, I had a terrible nightmare that for the rest of my life, all I'd be able to hear is German electro music. Turns out it was just a tangerine dream. Yay! 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 <laughs>
Weet je wat dan? Flip je dan zelfs de pijn. Dus zo vaak in maart, maar het was dan weer een keer dood. Ik voelde me. En Jiggy, die waren comedians die zijn zo dat voor de pijn. I was, I was lying parallel on the floor to the bed for a solid 60 seconds in absolute silence, right? She said nothing, I said nothing, it was so fucking fast, and I was like, oh my god, what do I do? How am I going to save my dom status now? And I panicked, and all the things I could do was go, hey, daddy's on the floor, I didn't know what to do. <laughs>
and, and, and at the end of a custom shopping, she came two little bags of like fun mix of Harry my things, and they skipped away. And it was beautiful, right? It's a wonderful thing. Like it's a rare occurrence in Tesco, right? And, and my, the other customer's kids were the exact opposite of this. They were fighting each other, they were physically screaming and crying, and even like scratching at their own mother. It's fucking horrible. Right? Now my, my customer's kids skipped away with a Harry. And these two fucking shit spawned in spite of this, right? They'd seen it like a pair of diabetic horse, right? <laughs> and they'd gone to their mum and they'd gone, hang on a minute, we've been asking for sweets all day and we haven't got it. This isn't fair, haven't they got some? And she turns to her own kids and I'm missing a beat says, yeah, well, my 